Okay, so on to question six. Okay, so it says to compare the fluorine, chlorine, fluorine angles and fluorine F2 plus and chlorine F2 minus. Using Lewis structures, determine the approximate bond angle in each ion. Which ion has a greater bond angle? Okay, so first let's look at ClF2 plus. So to draw its Lewis structure, we need to first figure out how many valence electrons are in the compound. So there is one chlorine atom that has seven valence electrons. And fluorine also has seven valence electrons, but there are two of them. So there will be 14. And lastly, this compound has a positive charge. So I'm going to minus one electron. And this gives us a total value of 20. Okay, so now that I know how many valence electrons there are, I can try to draw out the structure. So we have chlorine single bonded to both fluorines. And now I'm going to draw in all of the lone pairs. Okay, so now if we count how many electrons we have so far, each bond has two electrons. So there are two bonds, so that means we wrote down four. And then there are six uh, valence electrons on each fluorine, so that's 12 plus 4, which is 16. <laughs> and then now I need to write 20 down, so I'm going to write the last two electrons on the chlorine, which gives it a positive charge. Okay, so if we look at the structure of our molecule, you'll see that it has two bonding pairs. So that means there, it is bonded to two fluorines. And it also has two lone pairs. So if we look at like a Vesper table, or any, any of those charts that will help us determine the shape, you'll see that when it has two bonding pairs and two lone pairs, this gives us a bent configuration, or it gives us a, a tetrahedral shape. And the bond angle for these types of shapes is around 104.5 degrees. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for the negatively charged compound. For its valence electrons, again, fluorine has seven. Fluorine also has seven, but there are two atoms. So there are 14 in total. And then this time the compound has a negative charge. So we are going to add one electron. So this gives us a total of 22. Okay, so now if we draw out the structure, 
we have the two bonds to the fluorines. I am again going to draw all the lone pairs on the terminal atoms. And then if I count this out, um, again, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 electrons. So now I need 22 in total, so I need to draw down 6 more. And we put them all on the chlorine. Okay, so if we analyze this compound, there are still two bonding pairs. So meaning it is bonded to two fluorines. But this time there are three lone pairs on the chlorine atom. So this gives us a different vesper shape and different uh, molecule configuration. So that if we were to look it up on a Vesper chart, this would be trigonal, bipyramidal. and linear. So because of the extra lone pair on the chlorine, this changes the shape altogether. And now we have limited uh, angle movement from our fluorine bonding groups. And it basically has a bond angle of 180 degrees. Okay, so now that we know both of the bond angles of our structures, we can say that the negatively charged fluorine difluorine has a greater bond angle. Okay, so let's see what the junior tutor said. CLF2 plus has a tetrahedral electron pair geometry because there are four electron pairs, two bonding and two lone pairs, around the central chlorine atom. Thus, the fluorine chlorine fluorine bond angle is approximately 109 degrees. I got around a 104.5, but I guess it depends on which chart you use. The negatively charged compound has a trigonal bipyramidal electron pair geometry because there are five electron pairs around the central uh, chlorine atom. The two bonding pairs are in axial positions, while the three pairs are in equatorial positions. Thus, the fluorine-chlorine-fluorine bond angle is approximately 180 degrees. Yep, so this solution is correct.